Welcome to episode 22 of Back to the Futures, the official podcast of the Futures Collegiate Baseball League, presented by Change Up. I'm Matt Satilli. I am joined, as always, by my co-host, Owen Shadrick. It's a pleasure to see you, Owen. How you doing tonight? I'm doing great, Matt. Another great week of baseball, and we got this Monday release with Dominic Keegan, the guy that is absolutely raking right now. Dominic Keegan of the Nashua Silver Knights on this episode. As you mentioned, he was a great interview. He also attends Vandy. Pretty good baseball school, I'd say. And it's crazy that we only have one more full week of the season. We're getting down to the final push. Everything has been awesome so far, as we always mention. But let's talk about the last couple of days. What have you seen recently? Speaking of final push, Matt, the first place, Worcester Bravehearts won again today, 9-6. to six. They beat the Westfield Starfires. And pregame, they received their 2019 championship rings. Those things look really, really nice. And the Bravehearts are on a roll and can't wait to see what happens here in the final two weeks. It will be a great push to the finish. Worcester and Nashua up at the top. A lot of movement below them. A lot of teams like Brockton, Westfield, North Shore, even New Britain, not mathematically out of it yet. So a lot of things still to be decided. Yesterday, we had a great broadcast on Nesson. That was Saturday afternoon. Brockton defeated Worcester by a score of 8 to nothing. It was another great experience. More awesome exposure for the league. So that is our second of three broadcasts. And today, I was in New Britain. I saw Ben Malgeri have seven RBIs. He had a grand slam that hit about 30 feet up on the scoreboard in left field. It was a moonshot. Great performance by him. Yeah, Cody Morissette also had a day for North Shore. But again, Matt, shout out to you, Emma Carmen, and the broadcast crew for Nesson. Excellent job, and we got one more coming up on Saturday. Yeah, it was another awesome experience seeing the league broadcast on Nesson. Donnie Percaro and Austin Takuda did a great job in the booth, and it was great reporting on the sidelines alongside Emma Carmen. Great broadcast crew and the production truck. Also, shout out to those guys for making everything possible. Campanelli Stadium, beautiful ballpark. It was my first time there. Great experience. So another great weekend of baseball in the books. And now we want to bring you our interview with Dominic Keegan. So without further ado, here's Dom. At this time, we now welcome on a very special guest. He is the league leader in RBIs with 26, and he has been a key player in one of the league's best offenses. It is Dominic Keegan of the Nashua Silver Knights. Dom, welcome onto the podcast. Thanks so much for joining us today. How you doing? Yeah, thank you guys for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. And to get right into it, let's talk about your team, Nashua. You guys are rolling right now. You're in second place in the league, 16 and 11. How has it been playing with this team and having as much success as you guys have had? Yes, sir. I mean, it's been a lot of fun, you know. I mean, we got a great group of guys and, you know, we show up to the field every day and we have the same routine and, I think the biggest part is we just have fun every day and uh, it's been going well for us. So it's been good. And your personal success, you lead the league in RBIs, as Matt mentioned with 26. You also lead Nashua in triples with two runs with 21 and you're tied for the team league with five home runs and seven doubles. Clearly you're raking just on every level. What's it been like to be a leader for this team? And has there been any messages that you've sent to the younger guys on your team who are in this league for the first time? Yeah, I mean, um, Talking about my success, I mean, it's great having guys at the top of the order like uh, Shumsky and Rounds who are always on base for me and then having Duke hit before me and then meet after me who are also doing really well. Um, it makes it a lot easier to just play offense and play the game every day, you know, try to get runs up on the board. And for the younger guys, you know, um, like Luke Beckstein and Brady Day and all those guys, it's great playing with them and giving them little pointers here and there just to help them in their process and joining college baseball and for them to succeed at the next level. You guys certainly have no shortage of power in the middle of your lineup right now. And we're recording this on Friday afternoon. Last night, you guys beat North shore in a home run derby. You had 13 home runs. You guys are two and one in derby so far this season. What is it like to experience something like that? Something that's not a natural part of the game. And especially when it comes to taking a win or a loss, helping your team in that capacity, when it comes down to having to step up and, you know, just stay focused for those three minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, the home run derby is pretty cool. Um, obviously the energy's up all game, but when the home run derby comes around, you know, everybody gets a little bit more excited. The energy's up. Um, and it's cool to be like on the stage like that. And I mean, I like being in that moment and, you know, having Jack throw to me, uh, he's been money. So, just me and him being able to do it together and him throwing to me, it's been working out pretty good. So 
last night was really fun. It was a good, good environment. So you hear about it all the time, guys in the major leagues not electing to play in the home run derby during All-Star Weekend because of how it affects their swing. I'm curious if there's any mindset that you have when you're going into something like that or any alterations you make to try to develop a home run swing or if it's something that you feel just suits your game naturally. I mean, I think my home run, uh, my home run derby swing and my pregame BP swing is a little bit different. Um, like pregame, I try to see the ball deep, go the other way stay on a line, whereas in the home run derby, I just try to catch it up front a little bit more and get it up. Well, whatever you're doing, it clearly seems to be working. So <laughs> the fact that you got those two swings and they're both working is uh, good to hear. Thank so you. on episode 20, we had Ray Fagnan on. He is the Northeast Regional Scouting Supervisor for the Boston Red Sox. He was talking about the overall depth in the league and the talent across the six rosters. He spoke highly of you in terms of your play and your draft potential. How have you been using this summer to fine tune your game and stay in touch with scouts? Yeah, I know. Um, just, just being able to play this summer is a huge plus. Um, and then all the talent in this league, um, every game is competitive. All the players are competitive. So it's just great to get out there every day and compete against some great competition. I mean, every day I just try to get a little bit better. Uh, it's good to be able to play every day, playing first and catching a little bit. So to be in the lineup every day and to just stay in a routine every day has been, has been a big plus for me. Obviously, you play at Vanderbilt, but this experience with the league has got you playing against guys like Sal Fralick and Cody Morissette yeah. and guys from the Northeast. What's it been like to play against those guys versus playing at a school like Vanderbilt where you're playing all guys from the SEC in that mm -hmm. big powerhouse of a conference? Yeah, I mean, it's good to play against kids that you know from high school who you played with previously. Like, I played with Sal and the Navs um, my incoming freshman year. Um, so it's just good to see some familiar faces and to see how much kids have grown throughout the years, how, how much more mature they've become, um, how much better their game has gotten. So it's really good to see, see all those guys and to see how everybody's grown throughout the years. And back to Ray Fagnan, another person he scouted was your manager, Kyle Jackson, mm -hmm. a couple years back. What's it been like to play for Kyle? I love playing for Coach Jackson. Um, he's a great guy, knows a lot about the game, and he really lets us have fun with it, um, gives us a lot of freedom to really improve our games individually and as a team. Just letting us have fun and be ourselves has been, has been really good, and it's been working out for us. So. so you mentioned it earlier, between you, Jared Dupree, and John Mead, as well as some of the talent at the top of your lineup, you guys really have a strong top five, six, really just a super deep lineup. What is it like having that kind of chemistry and what is your relationship like with those other hitters? Like, are there any kind of pointers and tips given to each other and just being able to take the field and, you know, you guys are all hitting 350 plus. That's been really impressive mm -hmm. in a year where everyone said pitching was going to come in having a natural advantage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, we talk to each other pregame throughout the game, help each other on adjustments with our swing approach at the plate. Um, and really just having a lot of guys that know a lot about hitting and being able to put it out on the field and perform has been really fun. And you went on a streak from July 19th to July 26th. That was unbelievable. You had 13 RBIs in four games and you took home the player of the week honor after just dominating that week. Talk about that period and how you found so much success at the plate. I think I was just seeing the ball a lot better. Um, I made some adjustments. I think early in the season, I was kind of in front of everything, trying to do too much and just trying to be someone I wasn't. And going back to that week, I kind of just brought it back to what I know, keep everything simple and just try to help the team win. I think when you play for the team and not try to play for individual stats, you'll see your individual stats go up as well. You touched on it earlier. You developed as a catcher. You've seen a lot of time at first base this summer, however. So what's it been like making that transition? And do you see that defensive flexibility as an advantage for you as you look to talking to scouts, being able to be in more of a utility role wherever needed. No, yeah, I, I mean, I like being a, a utility guy. Um, obviously, I'm more of a catcher, first baseman, but I really just want to be in the lineup every day. No matter what team I'm on, I just want to be wherever the coach wants me to be. Um, whatever he thinks will help the team win the most, and that's where I want to be. So, Yeah, and now I'm curious, your experience as a catcher, do you feel like any of that translates into being able to figure out pitchers' sequences and when you get into that groove, just be able to have a better eye for what you feel is coming? Especially in like certain counts and stuff, uh, as a catcher, being able to call my own game, 
I do kind of have an idea of what the pitcher might come with. Um, but my approach is always the same. Like I always stay on the fastball and adjust off speed. Um, but it definitely helps being a catcher, especially the games that I do catch with timing and things like that. It really, it really does help. Yeah, we had Mike Caruso on a couple episodes ago. He said similar things about liking to control mm -hmm. the game and call his own game. Mm -hmm. And speaking of Mike Caruso, he talked about this. He plays for New Britain, and you guys and New Britain get fans in the stands as opposed to the teams in Massachusetts. What's it been like to play in front of those Nashua fans, and is there a big difference when you go to the fields like Campanelli Stadium and Fraser Field and don't have fans there? Yeah, so it, it is great playing in Nashua. All the fans come out, and it's good to see people out at the games, especially with what's going on in the world right now. Um, and it is different at the parks in Massachusetts where there's really not anybody there. And I know for our team, it really gives us a little boost to have people cheering us on and a good environment like that. And another unique thing about Nashua fans is they travel well. And when they travel, you know it with those cowbells. What's it like mm -hmm. having them at opposing parks and those cowbells rocking? Yeah, yeah, it's been fun. I know, I remember playing for the Navs and the Nashua fans would come to, to Lynn to watch us play. And it, it's, it's a good fan group. Before we get back to our interview with Dominic Keegan, once again, we wanted to give a big shout out and thanks to ChangeUp, one of the FCBL's cornerstone sponsors this season. As you may have learned during our recent Nesson broadcast, how cool was that, by the way? ChangeUp is a cutting edge player centric pitch and performance management application. By comprehensively and accurately tracking pitch activity and capturing critical in game performance data, ChangeUp helps baseball coaches protect their pitchers from overuse and helps players reach their full potential safely. We're a little over halfway through the 2020 season, and FCBL teams are already reaping the benefits of the ChangeUp application, including the ability to keep college coaches informed on what and how their pitchers are doing here in the FCBL. Coaches and parents at all levels, Little League, AAU, high school, and the collegiate level, take notice. ChangeUp is the clear choice to ensure your pitchers aren't being thrown too much or too often and are getting proper rest. In addition, ChangeUp's analytics function helps coaches and players understand each pitcher's current performance thresholds and helps inform training protocols to get your players to the next level. The Futures League is bringing you tomorrow's baseball superstars today. ChangeUp is helping make sure those superstars travel safely and as far as possible on their personal baseball journeys. Are you ready to join the ChangeUp revolution? For more information, visit ChangeUp's website, www.changeup.io. That's www.change-up.io. Change up. Every pitch counts. We now return to our interview with Dominic Keegan. And talking about your play this summer and just baseball in general. So earlier you found out that you had a blood clot in your right shoulder that needed surgery. I'm sure it wasn't clear at the time if you were going to be able to play again as soon as this summer. Talk about what was going through your head when you received that diagnosis and what playing this summer has meant to you. Yeah, so all that happened um, after the fall season. Um, and it was really uh, a tough time. You know, I didn't really know what my future held. Um, I didn't know how quickly I was going to be able to come back or things like that. But I had to sit out the first, first couple of games of the season at school. Um, and then I got to play in the last six or seven or so. And then when the season got canceled again, um, I kind of just took that time to to heal my body completely, to gain some strength back. Because I don't think I was at 100% at school, but I just, I was so eager to get out there and play and help our team win. Um, so when I got home, I really put a big emphasis on get physically getting my strength back, my durability back, being able to play this summer and just prove to myself that like, my body's back and I'm able to do this was huge. And being able to play every day has been great. It just shows that like, I feel great again and like I'm back to how I was. So it's been good to play every day. It's been good to be, it's just good to be back playing the game. Well, we're so glad to have you back. And once again, tremendous that there were no other complications and that you're feeling mm -hmm. good. Now, earlier in the podcast, particularly when the season hadn't started, we were asking guys how they were keeping busy during COVID, during lockdown, and how they were staying in baseball shape. For someone like you coming off of an injury like that, were there any alterations you had to make to your workout routine? Or, you know, some people have said they were able to rig a gym in their home. Other people have said they got access to a gym via a family connection or friend. 
What was that like for you on top of everything you had gone through, like you mentioned after the fall, trying to return to baseball shape? Yeah, so when I was coming back after my surgery at school, I kind of had to take things slow. Um, and towards the end, I was starting to ramp back up. And when I got home, I didn't really have access to a gym for a couple of weeks. So I was, I was really just making do what I had in the house, in the basement. Um, I had a couple dumbbells. I got a treadmill, stuff like that. Literally doing whatever I could to stay in shape and get a good workout in every day. And finally, when I got access to a gym, I've been able to go to a gym um, recently the past two months. So I've been working out at a gym the last two months, which has been good. Yeah, the in-house gym has certainly been a savior for a lot of guys on this podcast. Yeah. yeah. We talked earlier about the Navigators. You returned to the league for the first time since 2018. On the Navs, you hit 286, and you ranked second on the team in triples with three and RBIs with 21. Talk about your experience that summer compared to this summer. Yeah, that summer was was a lot different, I think. Um, I was coming off a high school season. My high school team had made the state championship, so I wasn't on the Navs right away. I kind of missed the first month or so, I would say. And then jumping right into a whole different environment, um, like college baseball is a lot different than high school baseball. Um, the game really sped up on me, um, and I had to make a lot of adjustments that summer. But I felt really prepared going to school for that fall season at school after playing with the Navs in that summer, playing with a lot of older guys, gaining some knowledge, things like that. So I, I felt really good after that summer with the Navs. And when you were coming back to the league, did you ever get in touch with North Shore about playing for them? And why did you ultimately decide to play for Nashua? Um, Nashua was just uh, right away um, offering me a spot. So I kind of just, at the time, I, I just wanted to be on a team and play this summer. Um, so that was just my first option, and I took it right away. Let's talk about your high school career first off. So you were at Central Catholic. You guys had unbelievable success there over your four years. Four straight MVC, large titles. You know, you are a New England guy. You're from Methuen, Mass., and you hit over 400 there in your career with 69 RBIs. What was it like playing there with as much success as you had? And ultimately, how did that lead to getting recruited to a school like Vanderbilt? Yeah, so um, high school, I grew up in Methuen. Um, Central Catholic is in Lawrence, Mass., which is like the town over. A lot of people, a lot of the kids I grew up with were going to Central Catholic, so I really wanted to go there. I grew up around that school. I would go to all the basketball games and things like that. And um, actually, Stephen Hazier, he plays at Michigan right now. He's, he's, I played baseball with him since I was like eight or nine years old. And um, he decided he was going to go there too. Um, so it was just great. And we both played um, on the varsity team together all four years. And we kind of just grew up together, grew together as players, um, helped develop each other, which was really good. And um, at Central Catholic, I made lifelong friends, people I'm still in touch with today. And a lot of them were on that baseball team. And we had a lot of fun in that team. We had a lot of good players, a lot of fun. And we were also very talented. My junior and senior year, we made the Super A tournament. Junior year, we didn't really play that well in the state tournament. But my senior year, we made it to the finals, um, which was really good. It was a really fun experience. But being recruited to Vanderbilt was actually through summer ball. Um, I played for the show in Lawrence, Mass. as well. Um, coach from Masney over there helped me get recruited. And also Coach Betancourt was my hitting coach from around here. So I played in a lot of fall tournaments, um, a lot of summer tournaments, and that's ultimately how I got recruited. Yeah, and we could not go through this podcast without asking you this question. What is it like to play for Vanderbilt, one of the best baseball schools in the country, and what made you initially choose to go there? So initially I was committed to Virginia Tech um, my sophomore year of high school, and the coach got let go. So I opened up my recruitment again, and Vanderbilt contacted me right away. And that's always been my dream school. You know, you always want to play with the best. And initially, I knew I was get, I knew what I was getting into, um, but I didn't really understand it fully. And when I got there, it was like a whole different beast. And I think going to Vanderbilt has changed me as a person as well as a baseball player. I think I've matured a lot. And, you know, people always ask, like, like you know, I didn't play my freshman year. Um, I didn't get a lot of time. But I think I went there because I, I wanted the challenge. I wanted to be with the best because I believe if you're around the best, it'll make you even better. So I, I love being in that environment. I love being with those guys. So, yeah, I think Vanderbilt was just the choice for me. Academically, it's up there with the best of them. And then athletically 
and then just being around coach Corbin and developing around those type of guys has been, it's been a gift. And I've visited Vanderbilt a few times, very, mm -hmm. very nice school. But one unique thing about it is you've got downtown Nashville in your backyard. What's that like? Mm -hmm. Very cool. Very cool. You know, there's always very popular people in the area. Um, there's a lot of people in general who like to come out to the games and stuff. So it's, it's very, it's, it's cool environment. And when we talk about Vanderbilt, we got to talk about the college world series, your freshman year, you guys won it all. What was it like to be part of that team? Yeah. I mean, so um, it was unbelievable. Just the amount of talent that we had on that team and the, the type of people we had on that team, the leaders we had, it was remarkable. I mean, that season was a season I'll never forget. And just to be along for that journey, to be in Omaha, it, it's it's a dream of mine. You know, as a kid, every baseball player grows up, wanted to play in the College World Series. And to be there, to be in that environment, um, and then to win it all was something I'll never forget. So during that tournament run, you got an at-bat in game one of the Super Regionals versus Duke, and you got a hit during at that at-bat. What was it like to be put on that stage in your first season to play? Yeah, I mean, it was cool. It was cool being in that environment. You know, Duke gave us a run for that money that game. Um, so it was just good to get out there and gain some experience. And talking about the strides that you thought you were making in year two, the fact that you got into 12 games last year as a freshman says a lot about your skill. And you mentioned that because of the complications that took place this fall and this winter that you had to sit out the first couple games this spring. But – where did you feel like you were at and what strides do you feel like you were prepared to make during your sophomore season there before it got cut short? I, I think I had a really strong fall. I felt really good in the fall. Um, I was playing a lot of first base, catching a little bit, but offensively I felt, I felt really good. I felt really comfortable. I, I just felt like in my zone pretty much in the, in the fall. And then going in when all that happened at the end of the fall, you know, I, I didn't really know what the spring would hold. Um, I didn't know how I was going to come back. Coming back from that, I was on blood thinners for a while, which is why it kept me out of play. Um, so during that time, I was kind of just getting my strength back and trying to find my swing, but I really wasn't getting any live at-bats. So for the first couple of games I was back, it, it was tough trying to find my timing back, um, trying to get into a rhythm again. But at the end of it, I felt like I was really getting into a rhythm. Um, and a lot of the guys on the team helped me through that. You know, I remember – some nights after games where I didn't play because I was, I was out where I'd go to the cage after the games and you got three or four guys down there working with me, me working with them, you know, and it's just type, that type of, that's the type of environment that coach Corbin builds at Vanderbilt, just guys helping one another and just being there for one another, especially when we need it. So it, it was really cool to see those guys step up in those times and try to help me when they knew that I just wanted to get back in the field and help the team win. So it was just cool to have those guys there with me. And then coming back was, I can't, I can't even explain, like just stepping on that field again. It was like a breath of fresh air. Yeah, and you talked about your teammates. Some teammates that you've also had are Kumar Rocker, a future first-round pick in the MLB, and Austin Martin, who was a first-round pick, drafted fourth overall by the Blue Jays in 2020. What was it like to play with Austin, and what's it like to play with Kumar on the, on the Commodores? Uh, they're both amazing dudes, um, very approachable. Um, I know going in, um, I didn't really know anybody and kind of like the freshman orientation and things like that. Um, I was welcomed in by those guys openly. And Amar has helped me tremendously with my game, offensively, defensively, um, mentally a lot. Amar has, he's been like a, almost like a big brother to me, kind of guiding me along the way, helping me. Um, find the ropes, things like that. And then playing with Kumar is just unbelievable. Um, he's, he's a huge competitor in everything. You know, we could be playing video games in the dorm rooms or at the field doing whatever, and he's, he's just always going to compete. And they're both great guys. They're great guys to play with. Um, but more importantly, they're, they're great people. Um, they're good people to hang around with. Yeah, and we saw on your Instagram story, you got that the shout out from the Vandy Boys Instagram and all the, it was yeah. cool to see all the guys from both Vanderbilt and Nashua shout you yeah. out. It was pretty mm -hmm. cool. Yeah, it is awesome. It is awesome. You know, it's like you build so many relationships in this game along the way. Um, obviously at school, you're with those guys like 24 seven, like we're with each other all the time. So th they're almost like brothers to me. Um, and then, then here in summer ball, it's same thing. We're with, we're with the same guys every day. So it's, it's cool to see the relationships you build along the way um, and to see how they grow throughout the years. 
So baseball is obviously a sport that contains a lot of purists, a lot of people who are very driven by the stats, the records, the cleanliness of the game. I'm a big uniform guy. You guys have some pretty sweet black pinstripes. What are your thoughts yeah. on them? Yeah, yeah, we got a, a good group of uniforms. Um, we have a lot of them, um, and we use them at specific times, like the pinstripes are our Friday night games. Um, those are really cool. And then on Sundays, you know, we wear the green ones that were introduced my freshman year. Um, so they're all really cool uniforms to wear, and we always look nice. Oh, that's good. What's your favorite uniform or what's your favorite piece of gear that you've been issued by the team? Favorite uniform? Uh, I have to say the black tops and the white pants. I think they just look clean, and I like the way they look. Um, favorite piece of gear? Hmm. We got some – for catchers this year, we got some Evo Shield gear. That was pretty cool. Cool, It would, like, form to your – to your shin. So I thought that was pretty neat and it was really comfortable. So. Yeah. I'm sure that when you're wearing those black tops on like a Friday night under the lights is, you mm -hmm. know, you just bring your game up to a different level when you're wearing black. Exactly. Exactly. And before we get on to our final segment, how about a quick message to silver Knights fans as we head closer and closer to the end of the regular season? Yeah. Uh, silver Knights fans. Um, thank you guys for coming out every night and uh, please continue to support us as we, make a run for this thing. You know, we're in second place right now. Hopefully we can bump up to first and make that final, final championship series. Yeah, it's getting down to it. It's crazy how fast the season has gone, mm -hmm. but we've enjoyed every step of the way. And uh, once again, wanted to thank you so much for coming on. We got one final segment for you though. Mm -hmm. It's called Quick Hits. It's presented by Zephyr. It's the official on-field hat of the Futures League. Zephyr, high quality and innovative design since 1993. So we got a couple more questions for our audience to get to know you a little better. Is that cool with you? Yeah. yeah. All right. Let's sweet. Do Let's do it. Favorite teammate in the Futures League, whether it's this year or in 2018? Jack Arend. What about him? Uh, he's just a great guy. He's very personable. Um, I knew of him. I th he played for the show. Uh, obviously, he's a couple years older than me. Um, but just a great guy. Knows a lot about the game. Um, and he's just, he's just a good guy to be around. He lifts everybody's spirits, um, being around him. That's great. And, uh, his older sister, Katie, the assistant GM there. So the Aaron family certainly has yep. the great people. Their footprint all over Holman. I love it. Favorite opposing great. ballpark in the league. Ooh, favorite opposing ballpark. Probably Brockton just gives me some high school memories. Um, and it's a really, it's a really good field to play on. Yeah, a lot of a lot of Boston area guys, certainly mm -hmm. with a ton of experiences at a at a stadium like that that has so many memories. What's your walk up music, whether in Nashua or at Vandy? Uh, this year it's "Can't Tell Me Nothing" by Kanye. Um, I don't know what I'm gonna do at school yet. I still gotta figure that out. My I might switch it up. So, okay, you think "Graduation's" his best album? Yeah, one of them. One of them. One of my favorite. Okay. Good answer. Favorite big league team? Uh, Red Sox, without a doubt. I've and been a Red Sox fan my whole life. Owen and I are always pleased when we hear that answer. Yeah, yeah. As a follow-up, favorite player, whether current or historical in the big leagues? I got to go with Manny Ramirez from the Red Sox. I just loved his swing. I loved his approach. I loved how he played the game. Um, yeah, one of my favorite players of all time. Yeah, that's one of the best photos in Red Sox history when he pinned uh -huh. that home run against the Angels oh, yeah. in there with his hands up. Sox legend for sure. How about a bat and a glove that you use when you're playing? Uh, so summer league we use wood. Um, I like the Victus models. Um, probably one of my favorite bats. I think I've been using those um, forever. And then favorite glove, um, Wilson. We got a Wilson contract at school, so I've been using Wilson for a while, and I love him. What brand of cleats do you use? Uh, Nike. Nike. So all of our gear is at Nike from Nike at school. So I use the uh, – I, I don't even know the name of them, to be honest, but they're Nike. Awesome. And we've seen some nicknames on the stories that I mentioned earlier, but how about a baseball nickname that has stuck with you over the years? Uh, everybody call, just calls me Dom. Um, some of the older guys at school last year called me uh, Dominici which I don't know where that came from, but hey, I ran with it. So <laughs> we have a, a podcast nickname for you. Is Dommy Dingers an appropriate nickname? Dommy Dingers. Yeah, sure. Sure. 
Perfect. And then are you superstitious at all? Uh, a little bit, certain things. Uh, I kind of have the same walk and approach um, at the, before I step in the box. Um, I, I do the same stretch routine before every game here. Um, so, yeah, little things like that. And let's talk about your numbers. You were 13 at Nashua and 12 at Vanderbilt. Any reason for those numbers? Uh, 12 has just always been a number that I've loved. I wore it in high school and then I carried it on into college. Luckily, I didn't even get to pick in college. It just wound up. That was my number, which was pretty cool. And then bubblegum or sunflower seeds, the age-old question. Ah, sunflower seeds. Definitely. Any brand or flavor in particular? I like the, the dill pickle, to be honest. Those are probably my favorite. That's a great, that's a great answer. Yeah. I don't have them on me right now, but those are awesome. <laughs> He's flashing. Yeah, those are my now, go-to. <laughs> Big dill pickle guy, Owen Shadrick. Yeah. And then lastly, how about a favorite all-time baseball memory? Favorite all-time baseball memory. It's got to be winning the World Series. I mean, it was, there's nothing like it. I can't even describe the feeling. I don't, I, I feel like I blacked out. I feel like I don't even remember some moments from it, but it was just, you know, like running from the outfield into the dog pile um, and then just hugging every one of your teammates. You know, you kind of work all year for that moment. Um, and then it finally just pays off like that. And to be able to celebrate with, you know, your brothers um, who you've been with for literally 10 months straight, spending every moment with, um, just to see everything pay off, everything all of you have worked for. Um, it was unbelievable. Quick final follow-up. What's it like playing at a park like TD Ameritrade and having the experience of being at a venue that hosts the event year after year after year? And where fans from all over the country, regardless of what teams are playing, will go there to watch that experience. The park is beautiful, first of all. Um, and then the staff that runs it are all great people. And like you said, the fans that come out for that is unbelievable. Um, you know, I think our first game, it was packed. You know, it looked like it was sold out. I don't know if it was sold out, but the first game against Louisville was unbelievable. And um you know, just to have all the teams there and, you know, even when you're not playing to be able to go to the park and watch the games from, from a fan perspective um, is really cool. Um, so, yeah, it's, like I said, once in a lifetime opportunity that uh, I'll surely never forget. Well, Dom, thank you so much for joining us today. This is going to conclude episode 22 of Back to the Futures. Best of luck with everything. We're excited to see you on the diamond real soon. Thank you very much. Thank you guys for having me. I appreciate it. So this has been episode 22 of Back to the Futures, the official podcast of the Futures Collegiate Baseball League. We got new episodes coming out every Monday and Thursday. Make sure to subscribe to our podcast. We're streaming on iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud, and YouTube. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see everyone soon. <laughs>